So we got a brand new version of Launchbox, which is 13.6, and I'm going to leave the link in my description for this one. It was released just a few days ago, and it's got a ton of load of new features. Uh, like every version of Launchbox, we get massive amount of improvements. So I've just looked through this, and I can see we got some PlayStation 3 improvements and some Steam game improvements. So there's a lot going on with the latest version of this. And we've also got some big box changes as well, so that's worth checking out. So what I'm going to do for this guide is get you up and running with it, get you up and running with your first game. So check this one out. Okay, so before I start this guide, if you like what you see today, just hit notifications so you don't miss upcoming content for Launchbox, Retrobat, Batacera, and so on. And also make sure to subscribe, it really helps my channel out. So, let's get into this. What we're going to do is just go to Launchbox and download the latest version for Windows. And what it asks for initially is just to pop your email address in and then press on download and that's going to send your email over with the download link in it. So I've just entered my email address and like it says, please check your email for the download link. And just download that file. If you're using Windows 11 for this, you might get a little pop-up saying that it's unsafe or it's unknown file. Just select keep on that and just let it download. It should take just a few minutes. Okay, so after that's downloaded, you're going to have yourself an exit just here. So what I'm going to do is just literally just left click on this. And it's going to take a few seconds just to open. And if you don't have that downloaded on the bottom of your web browser, then if you just go and find it, it's likely going to be in your C drive in downloads folder. There you go. So you can either install it and open it through the web browser or just navigate over to your downloads folder in your C drive. OK, so after a few seconds of pressing on it, like I said, it can sometimes take a little time. Uh, if you get a Windows protector to your PC and you're using Windows 11, which is quite likely, if you just highlight where more info is and just left click on that and run it anyway, that will then start the installation process. So we've got some things to go through. OK, so the first window is going to pop open is select your setup language. So obviously I'm going to be choosing Russian for this, which is actually English and press OK. And then we got a license agreement as per every other application or software we install on Windows. So press next on this. Now the next part is going to be fairly important for some people out there. By default, Launchbox is going to install to my C drive and it's going to be in my users folder. So if you want to change this to another directory, maybe you want to use this on an external device, then if you just go to browse and from browse, if you've got an external device plugged in like a USB thumb drive, then just highlight your external drive or wherever else you want this one to go but for me like i said i'm going to just whack this on my c drive and i'm going to press next and next up you've got an option here if you want to create a start menu folder so i'm going to just uncheck this leave it unchecked rather and just go to next and the next part is simply just press install and that's now going to install to my computer so this part can take a little bit of time depending on how fast your hardware is. And so once that process is complete, we're now going to launch Launchbox. So you don't need to press anything. This part is going to automatically do it. So first off, we're going to see a welcome to Launchbox 13.6. And it's going to give you some guides just below just for the basics to import your own games. But like I said, I'm going to get you up and running with this one. And as we can see already, I've actually got a Commodore 64 game installed on here, which is a bit strange. I wouldn't expect to that since this is a fresh install, but I'm going to delete this and we're going to start from scratch. So on my desktop, I have got here a PlayStation game and it's in .bin and .q. So this is the typical example of PlayStation 1 games. This is going to be the main extension you're likely going to find. Or uh, you can obviously extract your own PS1 discs and I recommend putting them into this file extension uh, just so that many emulators and cores accepts this extension. 
So we've also got some BIOS files for this and I've extracted these from my PS console. So this is the BIOS files you need for LaunchBox for PS1. So what we're going to do is head back into LaunchBox and from here we'll go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. And this brings up the new window, which is the files wizard. If we press next on here, uh, select the files to import. So my game is actually on my desktop. So what I'm going to do is just cancel out of here. And I'm going to create a new folder for this one. I'm going to go to folder and just title this one PS1 games. Now, if you've got many PS1 games, I recommend you do the same. Just create a PS1 games folder and drag and drop your games inside like I've just done here. So let's go back into LaunchBox and start this game. So Tools, Import, ROM Files, Next, and Add Folder. And now my game is located on my desktop in that PS1 games folder I've just created. So select folder and we're going to go to next. And what platform are you importing games for? So if I just drop this down here and I'm going to find Sony PlayStation. And there we go. So just click on that. And you also want to keep checked show default platforms. So press next. And what we're going to do here is choose an emulator. We're going to run this one through RetroArch. So I'm going to press next. And it's asking us where the BIOS files are located it's for PS1. So I'm going to go to Browse. And again, on my desktop, my BIOS files I just showed you are actually in this folder called New Folder. So just open this one. And there's the BIOS file I was asking for. So press Open on this and press Next. Now, the next window you see on the wizard is going to be if you want to relocate your games. Uh, so if you do, then just choose the relevant option. I'm going to use my game in the same place. I don't want to change it. So use the files in their current location. And I'm going to press next. Now, the next part is entirely up to you what sort of artwork you want to download for your games. Uh, if you check everything, it's going to be a lot of pressure on your hard drive and potentially go in to get rid of room for more games. So be wise what you select just here. I'm going to just go for everything and I'm going to press next. And obviously configure MU Movies. This is a separate website that you can sign up with for free and just pop in your user ID and your password. Press OK, and that should get you preview videos when you're using Big Box. And for those who's not sure what Big Box is, it's just an extra really cool feature that LaunchBox does. So rather than hit looking a little bit bland, Big Box gives you the all arcade aesthetic with big massive carousels, that type of thing, and wheels. So it's around £30 to buy for Big Box, or might be a little bit less, but it's not a bad option to go for. Now, the next thing we got is Bezel Project. So if you can imagine, the sides of our games are going to be black. And these are called bezels or decorations. And this is going to fill in that black space for you. So if you want to download bezels, then just hit Download Bezels. I'm going to leave this unchecked. And I'm going to go to Next. And I'm going to press Next on here. And it's now scanning for my game, which I just imported, which is my 007 game, which I dearly love. Under press finish. Now on this latest version of LaunchBox, we now have at the top of the screen refreshing local metadata, whereas before in the previous version, it was actually at the bottom. So just be aware of that if you're updating that things are changing. And we also got these options along here, which was actually on the right hand side in the previous 13.5 version. And there we go, there's our game, and we've also got a notification popped up now. So if you don't want to use Big Box, we can also make this screen look a little bit better. So if we go to Image Group, we can change the box art that we download. Some of them's going to have box art, some of them isn't. So clear logos, there we go, and so on. So we're obviously going to want retro arch with this. So what I'm going to do is just show you how to do this in case you don't have it. We're going to go to Tools manage retro arch and if you don't have it then you should have an install option for me i've got it i'm going to just update so by updating it that's going to potentially give us latest updates on the course that retro arch has so it's always worth considering updating retro arch
Okay, so once you've installed a Retro Arch, what we're going to do next is actually launch Retro Arch because we've got to download a core for this PS1 game. So if we just minimize Launchbox for now, what we're going to do, we're actually going to find where Retro Arch is. So let's just move out onto the desktop. And if I type into search, just type in Retro Arch, go to open file location. And this is where Launchbox installed your version of RetroArch. So as we can see, Launchbox emulators, RetroArch in my case. So from here, I'm going to open up RetroArch. And I'm going to download the PlayStation Core. So I've got my controller plugged in for this. And what I'm going to do is go to Online Updater and I'm going to go to Core Downloader. And if we just go right to the bottom, it's going to be easiest to find. We're going to look for a Sony PlayStation. And the core I'm going to be using is PlayStation B or PS X. Now, you can see I've got a hashtag next to mine. That means I've already downloaded it. Uh, if you haven't downloaded it, then just press a relevant button, which downloads it for you. And that's now downloaded. And if you've got a window mode of RetroArch, to change this into full screen so it opens up our game in full screen, we're just going to go to settings and then just go across and go into video. And from video, you can go to full screen mode and just make sure that start in full screen mode is turned to on like I've just done. So once you've done this, back out of everything and just make sure you save this. So if you go to main menu, configuration file, and I just select save current configuration just in case RetroWatch forgets what we've set and you don't want to do that every time. So once you've done this, just quit RetroArch. And from here, we can go back into Launchbox. I'm going to just right click on it and just left click on play. So that's it for today's setup guide for the latest Launchbox 13.6. Like I said at the start of my video, hit notifications and also subscribe so you get the latest content as I upload it. And be sure to check out my playlists for different front-end systems and setup guides that I cover, including Launchbox and Retrobat. But until next time, stay retro.